you're tuning in to Empowering the Hearts of God's People with Prophetess Sharita Berry. Join us as we go forth in transforming the nations with the Word of God. Good afternoon, good afternoon. I pray that everyone is having a blessed day on today. Today is Monday. We almost at the end of May. Next week is the last week of May. Glory to God. And next Monday is Memorial Day. Well, where we remember our um, veterans that have gave their life for the country. Glory to God. And um, also those that are alive and that had dedicated their life to serving our country and our Navy, the Army. Um, the Marines and the armed forces and we give God the glory and we give God the praise glory to God and we lift them up in prayer and their families that lost a loved one due to um, serving in the armed forces as well glory to God today is still day four we're on 2B as we're in our study guide today we're um, going to go over the biblical foundation questions if you're just joining us for the first time you might want to go back and listen to the first beginning of our studies we're studying the book pigs in a parlor by frank and Adam A. hammond the practical guide to deliverance glory to god we're learning about deliverance glory to god we're also going to be learning about um demon possession demon um grouping um and a lot of things self-deliverance and glory to god and i'm going to recap what we talked about on last week glory to god but first let us open up in a word of prayer God, I thank you for bringing us here to this day. I thank you, Lord God, I don't take this day like the Lord God. As we come before you, humble ourselves with a heart of repentance, bow down at your feet, God. Asking for forgiveness if I've done anything knownly or unknownly, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we cancel every hex, curse, vex, and spell. In the name of Jesus, we cancel every spiritual wickedness in high places. Demonic activity, Prince of Persia, Principality, Prince of Darkness, Rulers of Darkness, every imp in the name of Jesus, and we cast it into the abyss. Every dark that's coming from the north, south, east, and west, the north, west, the south, east that the enemy has sent forth in the atmosphere, we cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of chaos and confusion, every spirit of deceit and deception, mischief, mayhem, manipulation, torment, torture, backlash, retaliation, and vindication, we cancel and we bind it up right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of sickness and permanent and disease in the name of Jesus that has attached itself to the body of Christ that attached itself to individuals we declare and we decree on this afternoon that we speak healing in the name of Jesus we declare and we decree uncommon help and healing fall upon your body in the name of Jesus we speak to every organ every joint every ligament every tendon every blood bone in your body every blood vessel in your body every cell every your DNA in the name of Jesus we command it to line up according to God's word and purpose for his for your life in the name of Jesus, we call upon every born angel on this afternoon to send God at the four corners of the serpent realm to do battle on your behalf. In the name of Jesus, to serve, to protect, and to cover you and your household. In the name of Jesus, we call upon the fire from heaven to light up anything that is unclean, ungodly, unholy, that is abomination to God's eyesight, ear gates, and nostrils. And we continue to pray for those that are in mourning. Due to a loss of a loved one on yesterday, due to a loss of a loved one on today, due to a loss of a loved one this year, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for closing doors that no man can shut, and we thank you for opening doors that no man can we thank thank you holy spirit we thank you lord god for closing doors that no man can reopen and we thank you lord god for opening doors so no man can shut in the name of jesus glory to god thank you lord for helping me out on this morning this afternoon lord god in the name of jesus god we thank you we praise your name god we give you glory we give you honor where glory and honor is due. God, I bind up the tongue tied, the tongue twisting spirit that comes to twist and tie the tongue up and try to shut the speech down. In the name of Jesus, of the people of God, from going forward to speaking what thus says the Lord, from preaching, from to giving you praise, from giving you glory, for praying. In the name of Jesus, and we cast it into the abyss. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you and I praise you as I seal this prayer. With the precious brother Jesus Christ in Jesus' name, I say Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. She's going to recap 
from last um, time we met. Ephesians 6, 11, put on the full arm of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Chapter 3, title is Fight the Good Fight. So those y'all that have been with us from day one, if you have your study notes and your um, what you were writing down, what we was reading and what we was going over, remember we're on chapter 3, Fight the Good Fight. The ministry of deliverance is first and foremost a battle for, for self. Does anyone, does everyone need deliverance? Personally, we have not found any exception, exceptions, exceptions. While we have all walked in ignorance and darkness, the enemy has successfully made in, inroads into each of us. We must learn how to get him out of, out and how to keep him out. The second area of confliction in our lives is the battle for our families and many homes today. Even though husband, wife, and children may profess Christ, there is strife, division, confusion, and chaos. It is time the devil took his share of the blame, and it's time families learn how to drive the devil out of their homes. The third area of our lives in need of deliverance is our church. Satan has a special interest in the church. We can well believe that he will do everything in his power to sidetrack, hinder, weaken, and destroy the church's ministry. The final area of conflict is the battle for our community's hope for our communities and nation lies with the church. Jesus has the answer. Our problems are basically spiritual, and God has given us spiritual weapons and resources for victory. So today we're going to go over the biblical foundation questions. I remember we read in sections because the biblical foundation deals with the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the, the greater of truth, The gospel of peace, the shield of faith, and the sword of the spirit. So we have 19 biblical foundation questions. 19 biblical foundation questions. And remember, I'm going to go over all the questions twice so that you can get So that you can make sure that you've written them down. Excuse me. Sorry. So that you can make sure you have everything written down. And then we, the last set of questions is the personal reflection questions and the key reflections from the author itself. So today we're going to read the biblical foundation questions. And the, when we come back again, prayfully tomorrow, if the Lord's will, glory to God. We're going to come back with the personal reflection questions, and then we're going to go to the key uh, reflections from the author, and then we're going to give the answer to all the questions that was read in our session. So for those of you who are joining us, welcome. As we are continuing with day four and our study in Pigs in a Parlor, the Practical Guide to Deliverance, by, by Frank and Ida Mae Hammett. We're in chapter 3 in the study guide. Fight the good fight. And we're on the biblical foundations questions. Number 6. So that means for those of you that already have the questions. Remember the um, questions for reflect for review had 5 questions. So you want to go underneath number five and put biblical foundations and start with number six. You don't want to go one, two, three because you know it has the um the root quite it starts with the root questions on down to the personal reflection questions. So we're in biblical foundation questions and number six. Number six. John describes the nature and activity of Satan. What does Satan come to do? Number six. John describes the nature and activity of Satan. What does Satan come to do? Read John the 8th chapter verse 44. John the 10th chapter verse 10. That's John the 8th chapter verse 44. John the 10th chapter verse 10. Number seven. What are the pieces of our armor and what does each piece represent? 
What are the pieces of our armor and what does each piece represent? Read Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses 10 to 18. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses 10 to 18. Now we're going to see what how Satan attacks each of these areas of armor. So, you want to write the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. And underneath that, you want to write number eight. The helmet of salvation, number eight. What lies does Satan tell to combat our salvation? Number eight. What lies does Satan tell us, I mean, tell to combat our salvation? Read Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 8 to 9. Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 8 to 9. And number 8, the helmet of salvation. What lie does Satan tell to combat our salvation? Number 9 is still under the helmet of salvation. Number 9, with what does Satan assault our mind? With what does Satan assault our mind? Read 2 Timothy the first chapter, verse 7. Second Timothy, the first chapter, verse 7. What With what does Satan assault our minds? The next is the breastplate of righteousness. So you want to write the bless, breastplate of righteousness. Number 10. What tactic does Satan use to, ne- to negate our righteousness? What tactic does Satan use to negate our righteousness? You want to read Galatians, the second chapter, verse 21, to Galatians, the third chapter, verses 1 to 3. The breastplate of righteousness, and underneath that, you want to write number 10. What tactic does Satan use to negate our righteousness? And you want to read Galatians, the second chapter, verse 21, and Galatians, the third chapter, verses 1 through 3. The next one is the greater of truth. G-R-I-D-L-E of truth, the greater of truth. And you want to write underneath for that number 11. What do we need to guard ourselves against? What do we need to guard ourselves against? And that's number 11, the greater of truth. And you want to read Colossians, the second chapter, verse 18 to 23. Colossians, the second chapter, verse 18 to 23. Number 12. Is still under the girdle of truth. What does scripture say about membership in secret societies? What does scripture say about membership in secret s- s- sororities? I'm sorry, sororities. And you want to read Matthew, the fifth chapter, verse 14 to 16. Matthew, the fifth chapter, verse 14 to 16. And I'm going to do like I did the last time when we was in chapter... Um, one and two i went i came back and i read the biblical foundations questions so after we finish chapter three before i give the answer to all chapter three um questions i'm going to go back and i'm going to read all of the biblical foundation scriptures glory to god Next is the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. Peace. The Greek word for peace is in Ephesians 6.15 is enery. E-I-R-E-N-E. The Greek word for peace is irene. E-I-R-E-N-E, which means rest. The absence or end of strife. And you want to write underneath the gospel of peace, number 13. What is one way the enemy attempts to destroy our peace? What is one way the enemy attempts to destroy our peace? And you want to read 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 10 to 13. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 10 to 13. Number 14, we're still under the, the gospel of peace. Number 14, what would the enemy like for you to do in, re- in relationship disputes? What would the enemy like for you to do? Relationship disputes. You want to read Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 26 to 27. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 26 to 27. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. When you go to bed angry, you wake up with resentment. If not dealt with properly, 
resentment can become a root of bitterness if not cast out. We're still under the gospel of peace. Number 15. What does bitterness do to the body of Christ? What does bitterness do to the body of Christ? You want to read Hebrews the 12th chapter verse 15. Hebrews the 12th chapter verse 15. Next is the shield of faith. You want to write the shield of faith number 16. What did Satan initially try to do in the garden? What did Satan initially try to do in the garden? You want to read Genesis, the third chapter, verse one. And we're still in, in number 17. We're still under the shield of faith. So under the shield of faith, you should have 16 and then 17. Would you say that this one verse from Genesis summarized Satan's attack on our faith ever since? We're talking about the scripture Genesis 3 and 1. Would you say that this one verse from Genesis summarizes Satan's attack on our faith ever since? The next one is the sword of the sword of the spirit. And you want to write number 18, the sword of the spirit. What is the sword of the spirit? Read Ephesians 6, 17. What is the sword of the spirit? Read Ephesians 6, 17. A special word from the Lord. The Greek word rem, rema is applied in Ephesians 6, 17 and represents the Holy Spirit giving you a personal message to combat the fiery darts hurried at you the picture of battle is clear as satan hurls do um, doubts fiery darts you are to counter attack with the specific word or scripture the spirit has spoken to you rhema number 19 we're still under the sword of the spirit number 19 we're still under the sword of the spirit can you think of an experience in your life of, can you think of the, an experience in the life of Jesus where he applied the weapon of the sword of the spirit against Satan? Can you think of an experience in the life of Jesus where he applied the weapon of the sword of, of the spirit against Satan? And that was 19. Glory to God. Tomorrow we're going to come back with the personal reflection questions, which are two questions. Glory to God. My fact, let me just go ahead and move go on so we can wrap this up because we need to move on to chapter four. Um, so you're gonna write next for personal reflection after you write number 19 for personal reflection, and under that is number 20. In Matthews 25 and 21, Jesus says that one must be faithful first in the small things before gaining charge over greater things. Can you relate this to the difference between personal deliverance and warfare from community and country? Number 20. And Matthews, the 25th chapter, verse 21, Jesus says that one must be faithful first in the small things before gaining charge over greater things. Can you relate this to the difference between personal deliverance and warfare for community and country? Number 21, in the following passage, what two words best describes Jesus' ability to cast out demons? In the following passage, what two words best describe Jesus' ability to cast out demons? Read Luke, the fourth chapter, verses 31 to 36. Luke, the fourth chapter, verse 31 to 36. Now that we gave you the personal reflection questions, we're going to read the key revelations to ponder by the author itself. In Acts, the first chapter, verse 8, the disciples were granted miracle working power. The Greek word in Acts is dunamis, which means miraculous power, might, strength. It is the Greek word from which we get the word dynamite. Does this help build your confidence to confront your own personal demons? The kingdom of God is defined as righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Romans 14, chapter verse 17. Are you at peace? Do you have joy? Do you feel righteous? This is God's inheritance for, for you now. If you do not, there may be a demonic stronghold in your life. Consider this verse. 
Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces, forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Ephesians 6, chapter verse 12. Do you see the relationship between this verse and Jesus' abomination to forgive our enemies? And we just finished chapter 3. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Questions for review. So you might want to go back to 1A to read the question, to go over the questions for review. We did the biblical foundation questions. We're going to come back tomorrow and I'm going to give the answers to chapter 3. Fight the good fight, fight, fight the good fight. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. And then we're going to, before we move on to chapter 4, chapter 4 is the value of deliverance. The value of deliverance. Ephesians 5, 25 to 27. That he might present a, to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse 25 to 27 from the King James Version Bible. On tomorrow, I'm going to give the answers to all the questions that we went over. And then we're going to read the biblical foundation scriptures. So you want to jot these scriptures down. I'm going to go um, put it on the side. I want you to put on the side these scriptures that we're going to read. John the 8th chapter verse 44. John the 10th chapter verse 10. Ephesians the 6th chapter verses 10 to 18. Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 8 to 9. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Galatians, the second chapter, verse 21. Galatians, the third chapter, verses 1 to 3. Colossians, the second chapter, verse 18 to 23. Matthew, the fifth chapter, verse 14 to 16. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 10 to 13. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 26 to 27. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verse 15. Genesis, the third chapter, verse 1. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses 17. They are the um, biblical foundation questions. And also Luke, the fourth chapter, verses 31 to 36. Matthew, the 25th chapter, verses 31. Glory to God. And we're going to read those biblical foundation questions on tomorrow after we give the answers to all the questions that were presented from our study guide. Glory to God. So don't forget the value of deliverance is chapter four. The value of deliverance is chapter four. Please read Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verses 25 to 26. Glory to God. I am prophetess Barry, and I pray that this has been a blessing to you as we continue our study in pigs in the parlor. Glory to God. The practical God, practical God to deliverance with Frank and Otto May Hammond. Glory to God. If you do not have a copy of Pigs in the Parlor, you want you I'm give a website where you can order it from. Um, Impact Christian Books. That's www.impact.com. I M P A C T Christian C H R I S T I A N books B O O K S dot com, or you can go to Amazon dot com, type in pigs in a parlor, and it will come up, and you can order your book from Amazon as well. And you can also pick up the study guide from there as well. Well, I'm Prophetess Barry, and I pray that this has been a blessing to you as we continue our study in Pigs in Apollo, the Practical Guide to, to Deliverance by Frank and Adamie Hammond. Lord, we thank you for this time that we had together lord god as we learn collectively and corporately lord god to study ourselves to show ourselves approval unto you lord god in the name of jesus lord god as we learn about true deliverance lord god self-deliverance lord god and how to combat the wiles and the terrors and the snares of the enemy and every demon every imp in the name of Jesus and how we can pray, Lord God, strategically, Lord God, and help others to get free and healed and delivered, Lord God. And also at the same time for us to get healed and delivered and set free. And Lord God, help us and show us how to apply your word to our life daily. In Jesus name, I say amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you for listening to today's broadcast. Remember, you can connect with us on Facebook at Sharita Berry Ministries or contact us at 919-438-1473. That's 919-438-1473. Until our next broadcast, may God richly bless you and your family.